It's for wearing shorts. And then with the legs, I wouldn't wear them either. But I mean, just wearing them because of cold weather. What the hell are you doing? Hard to believe I used to do this press conference uh, three weeks later than now, because it's uh, October 15th is a long ways from now. It's hard to believe we're starting the 26th, but I'm excited to get going and um, looking forward to what arguably will be one of the toughest seasons in my 28 years here. I feel like we're uh, getting back to normal as a campus. Hopefully we can get our home court back to normal. I think we will. Uh, I know we have the camp out this weekend on Friday, which will be I think the 26th time I've slept out. I think I missed one because of travel and one because of weather that we canceled, if I remember. But any of you guys have enough courage to sleep out, I'll get you a tent. Jack, you might as well celebrate since you and I started together. Get your butt out there and uh, sleep out. And don't sleep much, but it is a it is a, a fun time, and I'm looking forward to that. October seventh, uh, guys are really looking forward to the madness. Uh, that'll be uh, something that uh, we really did last year, but we haven't had as good a turnouts and as good a participation because of COVID. So I think everything's getting back to normal there. Um, for me, it's been an interesting four years with all the things that have gone on here, and I think I too am getting back to normal. Um, kind of looking forward to scheduling the world. Um, the aircraft carrier game will be special event. Uh, the Tournament of Champions, the PK-80, the UConn at or, uh, Villanova at home, at Notre Dame, they're all going to be very good games and games that uh, hopefully, as our players were here for the reunion two weeks ago, said, that's why you come. I like the group I got. It's smaller. I don't like that. But we made a choice, and uh, the choice was to stick with the people we got, try to develop them, uh, try to keep the homegrown guys. Um, understanding that some of these guys are ready for breakout years. I think AJ will be ready for a breakout year. I think looking at this summer, um, Joey Hauser and Malik Hall had very good summers. Uh, maybe as good a summer as anybody was Tyson Walker. He had a great summer. And not to forget Jay Nakins, who, um, you know, is out for a little bit here. I don't see that thing going into the season at all, but does it hurt us that he's out? Of course it hurts us that he's out. Uh, some of you saw uh, Malik in a boot. Um, he's actually got a bad stub toe, I guess. I don't know if it's got a little, um, it's not a crack, it's a, like a chip, but uh, he's only supposed to be out a week or week and a half, so that's not anything of a crisis, but he will not be practicing for a while. and. More like they said it's not as bad as turf toe, so I guess that's the good news. But the group has been good. They've worked hard all summer. Um, Pierre had the summer of all summers at uh, Moneyball, so that should translate into we know that um, that makes a big difference, um, at least to some of the people out in the world, not to the coaches. But I have liked that Pierre and AJ have continued to lose some weight and uh, get in the shape that. I think they need to be. Pierre has, uh, him and Jaden, I think, spent the most time in this place, but Pierre has really spent a lot of time in now that Jaden's been out. And uh, I'm expecting a lot of big things out of Pierre, not because of his money ball uh, deal, but I think uh, because of the work he's put in. Um, we do have a good mix of veterans, and we are inexperienced at center. Uh, there's no question that. Our wings are going to be very experienced. Um, our guards, I think, are going to be much better in general because Tyson and AJ and Pierre and, and uh, Jaden all have some experience now. And uh, I think that's going to help a lot. Um, 
but the, the mix is good. Uh, the youth, uh, we'll see what, uh, what Ty does. Uh, that'll be a work in progress a little bit, but have been very impressed with how he's uh, kind of handled things. We'll see what uh, Jackson and, and of course, uh, Carson Cooper, um, that is where our question marks are, Malik, Carson, and, and uh, Jackson. But uh, all of them had good summers, and yet till the game start, you really don't know what you're getting. Jaden is doing as well as we said last week. Uh, we're expecting a full recovery. We're just expecting it to take probably another three, four weeks, which will put him into the uh, near the end of next month, uh, which will hopefully give us a week or two before the first game. Of all the people that will stay in shape, it'll be him. Uh, so I'm not worried about that. You know, he was improving his shooting a lot. And that'll take a little back seat, but uh, I don't think it'll be anything critical. And uh, as I said, Malik will be out of practice for a couple of days. Um, find out what happens after the, the weekend. He'll uh, get reevaluated on Sunday or Monday and uh, should be back shortly after that. So, questions. Wow, Max. Usually you have a pretty girl handing out mics. Now we got Max. <laughs> the hell's happened to this program? I, you mentioned about Mahdi and the center position. I guess, what have you seen throughout the course of the summer to allow him to maybe fit into that spot? And previously, we kind of thought maybe Carson would red shirt do you think that's is that off the table now or is it something you guys will talk about you know nothing's off the table but but uh i think we're gonna need all of our bigs and then somehow we can still go small ball at times but there are guys in our league that we have to play against and sometimes just having bodies and fouls to give is going to be valuable what has helped carson is he's actually been better than we thought and so we were going to redshirt him to develop him and and see what happens, but, uh, and he was agreeable to that, which means he's probably not American, because you can't do that in America anymore, and, and yet he, he did, and, uh, and that's what I liked. He's not had a chip on his shoulder. He kind of knew we were honest with him coming in. He was honest with us. This has been a, kind of a neat deal, and he's progressed, you know. We still think that uh, Jackson has as good of offensive skills as anybody we've had here in a long. Sutan was in two weeks ago, and he's talking about himself, and Zebo was here three weeks ago, and um, he's got kind of offensive skills like those two guys. Now, defensively, he's got to continue to improve, but where is Marty at? Marty's gotten bigger, he's gotten stronger. Uh, he's gotten much, much better with his post moves, his free throw shooting. Um, he's making great strides. Um, but it was almost like starting over, you know? We hadn't played enough. And uh, he's done a hell of a job this summer. And hopefully that turns into the things we need. What do we need? We need him to defend. We need him to set great screens and roll hard to the bucket. Uh, He's gotten much better with his hands, and that was a big critical issue. But that's still, of all the spots we got, that is a question mark spot. And uh, opportunities for a lot. I'm sure we'll be playing uh, those guys, but uh, Jackson and Marty will start out, and then Carson has come on where he'll be in the equation. And yet, a guy like Jackson can play more than one position because he can shoot the ball. Tom, you've got uh, a roster with uh, just sort of a lot of flexibility, it seems like. And, I'm try and I know you, it's a smaller roster, but you, you've got two point guards you can use together or separate, and you've seen them, right? You've got uh, Malik and, and Joey, who you've seen together, and maybe the three and four. Something. Like, in terms of not just pecking order at positions, but how it all fits, is there, are there more possibilities than maybe you've well, I think we go years. very small, and that's with our two point guards and maybe Jaden, and then uh, Hell Pierre could play the four and Joey could play the five. We could go with Malik and Joey at the four and five. We could go very small. We could go very big with Madi, Joey, and Malik and, and uh, Pierre. 
you know, yeah, we do have some flexibility. Um, I think the best thing is, you know, Joey really shot the ball well. Malik shot the ball well. Pierre has shot the ball well. Jaden has improved his shooting. I think that was a weakness of us last year. We had some shooters that didn't shoot it as well. So now we've got to shoot it better as a team, and yet we weren't awful percentage-wise. We just didn't take as many last year. I think we got to take more threes. I think we got to get to the free throw line more. And, uh, and I think part of that will be we have to exploit mismatches that benefit us and not worry as much about mismatches that would benefit our opponent. So, uh, yeah, I think we have, you know, when you talk about depth, you know, we're looking back at our teams, and we had one team that had a lot, a lot of depth. But as far as actual playing guys, a lot of times you're not much more than eight or nine, and that's probably what will be this year, you know. Um, Practice-wise, it could be a little more difficult. But uh, I'm sure it's the same with everybody. I think you're seeing in college football, um, a lot of this all over the country. I think you're going to see some of that in college basketball. And uh, some of it is because uh, injuries could play a big part for a lot of teams. Nobody has the depth because it's, 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 there's some things that are illegal now. Red shirting is illegal. Playing behind somebody is illegal. You're not allowed to do that anymore. Um, so we've got some things that we're adjusting to and kids are going to adjust to and we'll see where it takes us. Um, this will be the first time in, I think, 15 years that you haven't had DJ and Mike on your staff to start a season. Just wondering how big of an adjustment that is for you and how the new staff has kind of come together so far. Well, Mike was in today, and I talked to DJ yesterday, so, uh, you know, they're still around. Um, but yeah, you're right, having DJ at Western and Mike uh, enjoying life are uh, two things that I'm happy for both of them on. You know, it's been kind of interesting, uh, you know, Doug came back after being here in years, I don't know, 03, 04, 05, somewhere in there. And then Monty was here eight, nine years, and then he left, and then he came back. And, um, and Thomas Kelly, who was played here, and then he was a GA here, then went to Western and came back. And John Borovich, who was a GA here, then worked for Brian Gregory and worked for Monty. So guys have been in kind of the system. And yet I like that they've been at different places a little bit. Brings a new, little new blood. And then Cueto and, and uh, Austin have still been great for us, you know, in meetings and that. You know, I, I can look at someone now and say, okay, what do you think of Twitter as a 25-year-old um, Cueto? And if he agrees that it's a good thing, then I kill him. And then we go on from there. So this gives me somebody to beat on in the meetings and, and work with. But uh, in general... Uh, I was going to miss Mike. I mean, he's been with me since college. and uh, But he'll be around a lot, and um, he's going to stay in the area for a while. And uh, but, but Mike's Mike. Mike's a friend. I'll miss DJ because DJ, as I said a lot of times, is a w way better coach than maybe he got credit for. And uh, But at the same time, um, you know, when you move on and you get new blood, I mean, uh, just just to ask John Borovich, well, what did you do here? And what did you do there? And you know, I like that. I don't like that, you know. It gives you some new ideas. It gives you some new issues in it. And sometimes it reaffirms, reaffirms what you already thought and done because you – They'll say, well, we did this, but it didn't work. Yeah, well, that's why we do it this way. Or we did this, and it did work, and that's why maybe we should adjust. So i um, going to miss them, but uh, pulling for DJ to have great success over there. I, uh, some of his staff and his players came up last week to watch practice. Uh, we went over there, of course, and we'll get back over there, try to get to his first game if I'm not playing. I think that's an awesome opportunity. I think Western is putting some money and things in there. I love their new AD. I think they're going to really uh, uh, take a jump. It's a good time for him to be there. And for Mike, um, you know, all he's been through with his family and that, uh, if you see him, even though we all know what happened, he's in the best shape of his life. So I think Mike's going to uh, do very well, but it's going to give him a chance. Uh, you know, Mike got married a lot earlier than most of us, and he had kids a lot earlier than most of us. So he's trying to chase grandkids around, and that's a little harder than just chasing kids around. So I'm happy that he's going to have the opportunity to do that, and I think we'll uh, 
I've been very impressed with the job, you know, Doug and Monty have done at the top of the list. And then uh, I think uh, McQuaid is coming along as a coach. And Austin has done a phenomenal job in the video area and helping in other areas. And then for TK and John Borovich, John Borovich has had to recruit the world. When you're at Northwestern, you recruit a different kind of guy. And, you're, and I think that's been really good for us. And, uh, and TK's, you know, you don't replace Mike because Mike was, uh, he was a disciplinarian and he dealt with all the problems. And T TK more or less has incredible people skills and he's a big workout guy. So he's helped us in that area. So, you know, we lose a little, gain a little. I think all in all, that'll be no excuses for how we do. I'm going to miss those guys, but uh, they're not that far away. I'll still be calling them and talking to them a lot. Other than a gauntlet, how would you best describe the non-conference schedule that you have coming up here? And then on top of that, what are you doing to make sure you have the mental fortitude to withstand it? Decent questions for this early in the year. Gauntlet? Um, you know, it's kind of got insane. I thought... Um, it was a tough schedule, and then late we added Gonzaga because I wasn't going to pass up the aircraft carriers Michigan State. And I wasn't going to let somebody else steal it. And so was it too much, what we already had? Probably. Um, so that's how we got to that game. Uh, it was scheduled for two years ago, COVID, North Carolina and us. Roy left, changed up a little bit. So that's how that came on, and it came on a little later. And then uh, thought we were going to play Butler in a return game, nothing against them, but then all of a sudden TB changed it. You know, when, you, when you're in, when you are Michigan State, and I think this is a big credit to us, meaning the program, the university, um, you, you play in the ACC Big Ten Challenge, every Big Ten team gets to. Half of them are playing in the Big East, the Gabbitt games. So that's something you don't control. Uh, you get invited to the best of the Thanksgiving Day things, whether it's Maui, Puerto Rico. Uh, this thing out there is incredible. And because they changed our game with Villanova, they had to change a couple of the teams we might have played out there. So it went from a little more sane schedule to insane, opening with Alabama and then either having um, Oregon or UConn. Uh, and then we came back, and then the travel can get us a little bit because we come back on a probably early Monday morning and uh, leave for Notre Dame Tuesday and go down there and play the Fighting Irish. So, um, yeah, it's as good a seven-game stretch as maybe ever, and then we'll, somewhere right after that, or is that when we play the Big Ten, yeah. two teams? So as good a nine-game stretch as this school, maybe – anybody in the country's ever played. But what a, what a great opportunity for us to not only see where you're at. Um, did we bite off more than we can chew? Yes, we did. Um, am I upset about it? No, I'm not. Um, if I was, you know, like most people say, well, you always had a good schedule. I say, yeah, not, not quite like this, but I was a little concerned about the travel. You know, you go to California twice, more or less. Um, and because of that, uh, you know, that, that three-hour time change does affect you somewhat. But the opportunities we have, the ability to see where we are, the different teams we're going to play, the fact that Michigan State University is going to be, there's, I think, I think the Tournament of Champions has been like the second biggest watch game um, other than the Final Four over the years. And uh, I think the aircraft carrier, you know, could rival that. So, you know, we're going to be playing in two of the top five watch games, I bet. And uh, good for recruiting, but better for Michigan State, you know, for football, volleyball, women's bath, for all of us and our university in general. So um, I'm excited about it. You know, it's been a battle cry all summer, you know, that you better be ready. But your second part of your question, I think, is more important than the first part. Um, we all know mental health and mental uh, is, is, is rising to a forefront. And, uh, and the problem with it is my favorite topic is Twitter, you know, and, and what these 
um, sometimes uneducated people say about whether it be our football, basketball, Indiana's football, basketball, anybody's. It's just out there. And, and that creates problems. And I was talking to my staff today, and the advantage, too, of changing the staff a little bit, I've got uh, John and Monty. Monty's wife's due any minute, so if he's not at practice or you see him running out, uh, you know, his wife is delivering um, as we speak. And it, it better be a damn seven-footer or he's off the list. And, uh, but when you look at it, uh, I was telling him, you know, we all think we should just be able to handle it. And now when you throw gambling in there, like we have, this is a major problem right now for all of us. And I asked them, would you want your little six or eight year old going through this in 10 years? And then they look at it differently, you know? Well, here at Michigan State, that is my family. Those guys are my family. And I mean that about as honestly as I can say it. Um, my son should mean a little more, maybe he does a little more. Not a lot more. I mean, I've treated it that way since the day I got to this institution. And so maybe some people want to handle it like everything's a transaction. I'm not one of them. There's no transaction here. This is about um, how people are treated and how they're handled. When you have a schedule like ours, you not only now have to win games, but you have to win them by the right points or someone's ripping you on Twitter. And that is disgusting to me. So I'm starting my year out with a nice little commercial. But understand this, I'm damn serious about it. And uh, I hope all of you take that into account. And whatever you, know, you hear and say, think of your own kids, because that's the way I look at it. Uh, mine are 18, and they want to act like they're adults. And you want to treat them like they're adults, and their parents want to. They're not. They're not. They're fragile, they hear things. It's why you're seeing all this, what did you think, all of a sudden um, m mental illness became such a problem or confidence, be you think it just happened? You know, you think you went 50 years of athletics, 100 years and all of a sudden it just happened? It happened when this other stuff happened, the freedom of doing this and the freedom of saying what you want about somebody. Okay, it's all great. But just remember, there's a price to pay. So I will always, my thing will be open today. You can come down there and look at the first part or whatever, because I'm always going to be cognizant, appreciative of the job you guys do. But there will be protection from me for my guys, because when we're to the point, when we're to the point where even winning isn't good enough, but how much you win by, that's insanity. Okay, does everybody hear me? That's insanity. And because some idiot wants to bet on the last free throw and then rip my guy, that's insanity. And uh, I got no use for it. And uh, so then I should have played a schedule that we had 11 cupcakes and didn't have any of those kind of insanity things happen. But we're not, because we're gonna make our guys mentally tougher. We're gonna make them physically tougher. And we're going to stick together like nobody's tomorrow through thick and thin. And uh, next question, now that you got me fired up about my favorite time. Don't, don't think it's just a normal favorite t subject, though. It's not. It's changed. It's changed. These other things that now we allow have changed it even more. And uh, you can think about it until you think about your own son doing it. And you'll think differently about it, I promise you. You don't have kids, you don't know yet. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, I wanted to ask you about, obviously the goal here is always championships and having a shot to win the Big Ten in the last few weeks. When you look around the rest of the Big Ten, I don't know how much you have at this point, I'm sure you have. Does it feel like this is one of those years where it really seems like it's wide open? So in a season where maybe you're, you don't have the depth you normally have, it feels like we, we still have the yeah. shot to be a competitor. Well, the goal is the same, and it'll always be the same as long as I'm here, be, because I've had the privilege of going into a NCAA tournament as a seven seed and getting to a Final Four. I've had the privilege of not being ranked as high and winning a Big Ten championship. That's where experience helps. Now, is that the normal? 
Is that the way you want to do it? But this year, other than Indiana, I don't know who has what. There's so many guys that have left and moved and gone here and gone there. I don't know who's going to fit in, who's not going to fit in. Having good enough players is one thing. Uh, remember this. Championships are still won with chemistry and, and some kind of character. You know, you got to have character and you got to have chemistry to win championships. And, you know, who knows how some of these teams are going to fit together. Um, but the best talent doesn't always win, or I could tell you uh, three or four schools that would win every championship. So, um, Fred, Fred, I don't mind if your wife calls, but your barber, I mean, that's ridiculous, man. Yeah, tell her hello, tell her happy birthday. Anyway, um, I, I feel it's more open than normal. Max, you gotta get a new podium here, brother. Um, I do figure it's it's uh, it's a little more open. I think Indiana's got the most coming back that you can see, but uh, there's gonna be a lot of good teams. The league isn't gonna take a back seat to anybody. Is there anybody that you just say they're great? Well, I don't know if you say that about anybody around the country because I don't know if anybody knows who anybody has or how those people, those parts to the puzzle will fit in. And uh, that's what's so difficult as a coach. You know, you're seeing in football all over the country, not only upsets, but even swings in games and that. And I just think there's not the consistency right now because we're, we're not consistent as, as, you know, teams right now. And uh, so we'll have to all adjust. But it's going to be the same for everybody. But answer your question, yes. I think, uh, you know, maybe in a year where you don't look at uh, – uh, the depth being the same, or you've you got some unknowns. Um, teams in this league that'll feel they have a chance to win it, and that'll be the exciting part of it. Hey, Tom, I remember at the end, of, well, really, really throughout last year, leadership was sort of a question for you. And at the end, you know, I was, uh, we were asking a little bit about AJ and whether he could be that guy. And I'm wondering if you've seen that from from him over the summer, or others that are you know, have leadership that is still space. a problem. Um, and I think if you talk to most coaches in most sports, they tell you the same thing. You're getting a lot more coaches that are uh, going game to game. You're getting coaches that are going uh, uh, by committee. Um, you know, we're trying. I, I think it's important you get somebody uh, throughout the summer. Different guys have shown some. Uh, Jay Nakins has shown a little bit more than I uh, than I thought he was. Uh, that's been encouraging. Uh, I think AJ is the guy that most of us, because you want your quarterback being the guy. I think Tyson has shown a little bit more. The difference in Tyson Walker is why I'm a big fan of sitting out. You know, I mean, he had an okay year last year, came on better at the end. But boy, the year to get to know the program and now grow in it and everything, he's a lot better player, I think, than he was a year ago. And, and uh, you know, he's showing some of that. And of course, Malik and Joey are our oldest guys, and uh, and they've had great summers. So it's going to be a little bit by committee early, and hopefully after three, four weeks of real practice, we'll pick somebody. But has anybody just stood out yet? Not yet. So when you talk to our players, challenge them. Um, I've been doing it all summer, and then I'm not in a bad way. Um, I think in a good way. And sometimes, you know, especially talking to, to Mel or – to even Nick over the years or to uh, Mark D'Antonio, you know, some people have a leadership council. They have a leadership. It's a little easier in football because you get more numbers. But the reason they're doing it usually is there's not enough people that are kind of born leaders anymore. You know, the Cleveses and the Johnsons and even the Valentines or Tum Tums or Travises, those guys, there's not as many of those anymore. And uh, hopefully we'll we'll find somebody but uh, I've had good chemistry I've had good moments of leadership but as they say great leaders are doing something when nobody's watching I'm still trying to find that two things one at a time um, you've talked a couple hundred times about what it means having your ex-players back but you just had the grind week I'm wondering what it does for your players, and I don't mean in a rah-rah, boy, it feels good, great to have him back. When when Draymond and Steve Smith and even Shannon Brown is back this year, and they they bond with him, does that help your team on the floor? Or uh, it, you know, I really don't give a damn what it does to their players. For me, 
That, made, that motivates me a lot. But you know what I enjoyed is I didn't talk in one huddle that they had at the end of each workout. I just let Mateen talk, Draymond talked. Um, uh, Fremont talked a lot, um, Mateen talked, and, uh, but Steve, Steve a couple times uh, talked to him, and, and it was, you know, when Mateen talks, I realize how much I, why we won a championship. You have to have guys that aren't afraid of hearing their own voice, and that really, when he talks, I swear to God, he's us again. And but I think that happens because now he has a son this age and he looks at it even differently because he's telling him I've sat with him at a piston game and he's telling him that was the wrong decision. That was the right one. You're not doing that. You know, it's amazing. And uh, so I think for the players hearing that, I hope and that's another good question to ask them. It meant the world. But, you know, we're kind of in a society where everybody thinks they've accomplished everything and sometimes people don't listen as well as they should they think they know everything and uh, you know I, I thought those players talked to him in such a way that uh, I think they did listen I think they did hear I think they talked a lot more about things that were non-basketball and just how hard you got to work, how close your team's got to be. It was really fun. It was fun listening to Draymond from an NBA level, talking about that group he's got that is stuck together. It was fun listening to Mateen talk from a college level. And, uh, and Steve Smith kind of put them all together because he's done both, and now he's in the, the broadcast world where he gets to see different teams, and he's very close with the Pat Rileys of the world or the Greg Popoviches and guys that have done it the right way. So uh, that week is special for me because they come back. And this year we had, you know, Corey Lucius back and Shannon Brown, who hasn't been here in a while, back. And and Jason Richardson's coming in for the, for the uh, I think it's uh, Ohio State game. And, and Zebo was back earlier, was supposed to come back. But we're getting more guys back. And next year, I think we're going to have a blowout one that uh, is going to be the biggest ever in the history of basketball. You used to joke about how long Judd coached, and that'll never be me when I'll you're there. So I'm done asking you how long you'll go. But what's your energy level now at age 67? Um, you know, I did say that about Judd, too. And uh, I don't know. You know, it's uh, it's interesting. I'm sure it goes it happens to all of us. That uh, I said when I I always said when I can't take a red eye from well last week I went recruiting in Arizona and sure as hell not gonna uh, throw you the ball in the post. I'll tell you that right now. But um, and went up to to Vegas to see somebody and. Uh, took the red eye home and guess what still standing so I'm good for another couple of years and uh, you know I, I don't know I don't know I, I unfortunately and I said this and I believe this I don't think the game will get me out I think the administration of the game would get me out um, I, I still don't like the direction that college sports is going in a lot of reasons and uh, but I'm I'm not just complaining about it I'm on every board you can be on to try to to help make it better. And uh, if there's one thing that I'm proud of that I think Judd would look down and say, um, the game means more than anything. And uh, so I'm going to keep working on that. But I'm uh, feeling good. Recruiting's gone well. Um, I'm last week saw two sophomores and a freshman. So. Uh, who knows? I'm, I'm, I'm definitely uh, not putting any time frame on it. I'm definitely not thinking anything in the near future. But I'm definitely, positively, not going beyond being able to do my job. And that's take red eyes, get out recruiting, do whatever I got to do on a daily basis. And how do I feel now? I probably feel the best I've felt in the last five years just because of all we've been through in a lot of different areas. COVID in, in, in particular lately, and uh, 
we're moving forward now. I'm not wearing a mask. I'm going to coach, yell at officials again. It's going to be fun. Can't wait to get started. Tom, one more quick question about your team. Tyson last year shot 47-3 from deep. Uh, it was the same as Respert his senior year when he was player of the year. But he was kind of a reluctant shooter in certain games. How can you get him to have more offensive initiative when it's there? Well, I think that goes on both parties, you know. I think, uh, you know, we didn't play him as much maybe in certain games, uh, number one. Number two, he didn't get the ball when I think he could have and should have, you know. Uh, you know, if, if I didn't do a good job of, we got to figure out who are our shooters. Those guys got to get shots. We got to quit turning the damn ball over. That's been a point of emphasis all summer. We did get more shots last year, I think 57. I'd like to get over 60 shots a game. That would help more people get more shots. We got to get up more threes, but you usually get threes that are inside out, which means guys got to drive it and kick it. And I thought last year we drove it. We tried to finish it. That's where some of those turnovers came on. That'll be a big part of AJ because he's strong enough to get in there and, and pass it. Um, so, I mean, all those things are part of it. But definitely Tyson has been a, a bright spot of the summer. He's shooting the ball extremely well right now. He's, as he said, he's stronger. He's in the best shape of his life. It would be an interesting interview to ask Tyson the difference between two summers ago and this summer and what a year has done and uh, all those things because he's had a great year. He's on track to graduate. You know, everything that you hope for a kid, he's doing. And uh, yet the rest of us, coaches, staff has to do their job. And those point guards, which he's won at times, uh, he just has the ability to play two positions pretty well. And yet where he could be really dynamite for us is he's a guy who can shoot it and guard it. Most guys that shoot it, it's illegal to guard it. And he can shoot it and guard it. And that, uh, that could separate him a little bit. So time for one more, whatever. It's up to you guys, gals, ladies. Uh, about Jaden, you mentioned Youper, got to be a youper, man. You don't need that freaking mic. You just want to talk, right? right. <laughs> I like it. Um, you mentioned his injury stuff. You don't see being a factor in the season. Um, how are you going to handle that when he does come back? Is he going to have any minutes restrictions day one? Or is he gonna be you know, that kind of, yeah, that's a good question. It kind of depends on the doctors and what they tell me. And uh, thank God they caught it before it broke through. So there, we've, we, we're... We're on the bright side, and we went to a specialist that really did a hell of a job, and everybody's real comfortable and confident and everything. But hey, that's that is above my level. Uh, you know, I don't know what's going to happen there, and uh, we will definitely not. Um, we're not going to put him out there early and jeopardize a season to miss a couple of games, whether the biggest games or not. We're not going to do that. But I, I don't see that as an issue right now. And I think the good thing with Jaden, he's down there cranking it on that bike and on that uh, Versa climber. I mean, his conditioning, I think, will be good, like Cleves when he came back, uh, you know, after being out three months. Uh, Jaden will be out, you know, six weeks. Um, so I, I, I see a lot more positive in that, but only time's going to tell that. And uh, there'll never be a time with him. He's worked so hard in the offseason that I'll jeopardize. I mean, Remember, I'm the idiot that lost the right state, and Cleves was sitting there swearing at me for not putting him in, and uh, then put him in, and we lost. So no, nothing's more important than Jay Nakins to me, uh, including a game or two. But I, 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 that's that's one of the unfortunate things about Audrey's question is. Um, you know, we don't get a chance to groom our freshmen into things very much here in that preseason. It's one of the arguments that the guys that don't play anybody always say to me, you know, nobody's mad because everybody's scoring points. You're winning. Media's not on you. People aren't mad at you. Uh, there's all truth to that. But I like when people are mad at me. Yeah. Yeah, I wasn't expecting to, to get to ask a question, but that's kind of kind of cool. Uh, <laughs> what I want to ask you, Tom, is that you mentioned Carson's been better than you expected. Can you can you give some just kind of specific examples of those areas where he's he's been better than what you thought? On well, he's, he's just very talented offensively. He's got very good skills. You know, he does not have great quickness yet. He's working on his strength. He's getting his body in better shape. Um, 
but uh, I mean, there's big guys, you know, like I, I told Sutan, he was back a couple weeks ago too, and I, if he would have fallen in love with the game as a freshman, he'd have been an NBA player. Well, Carson, I mean, uh, you, did you just ask me about Carson? Or? Oh, Carson, yeah. Carson. Um, Carson is in love with the game. And um, he has length. I mean, he is 6'11", and he has long arms. And what he is is a way better athlete than I thought he was. I mean, he goes golfing. He's a very good golfer. He plays pickleball. He's a very good pickleball player. Um, he can throw a football. He can catch a football. He has very good athletic skills. And what he's working on now, and he's got good hops. What he's working on is we've changed the body already, and he works on it. He's a far phenomenal student, so he picks up everything well. And he just, um, after talking to one of his coaches down there, was Vernon Carey's coach, and I knew him from recruiting him. And he told us early on, this kid will be a, a little bit of a diamond in the rough, you know, and he has been very good. I mean, uh, you know, he's not as offensive skilled as Jackson, of course. He's not as strong or athletic as Mahdi, but he's got something that neither one of those have. He has longer length and uh, still has some athletic ability to it. So who knows what that's going to mean? You know, it's always different. Like I said, summer ball is one thing, winter ball is another. You know, I don't know if Ebok played soccer. Um, some thought he played soccer while he was playing basketball, but uh, but I uh, love Edong. But anyway, uh, you know, if you look at athletes are athletes, and bigger guys, Elijah Wan was a soccer player, you know, those guys can, can play different sports, and I think that says something about your athleticism. And when you're a big guy and you have that, and you still have some passion and love for the game, and you have very very good intelligence. I mean, he's even a pretty intelligent basketball player. I mean, basketball IQ, but he's a very intelligent student, so I think he'll pick things up quicker than maybe most guys, and, and that'll help. So between the three of them, we have different guys, different guys to go to. We'll just see how they do now as we really start practicing and scrimmaging and getting up and down a little bit. All right. Well, it, like I said, it's uh, day one, and uh, you can see a little bit of it today. We'll still open it up. Everybody's going to have questions, but I have. Uh, I feel good about, you know, where we are. Uh, you know, whenever you have an injury or two, you say, "Wow." You know, I look at what football's going through, and there's a lot of injuries. You have those years where you have none. You have those years when you have a lot. If we have a lot, we're in trouble. But we would have been in trouble anyway. You know, when you say about depth. Um, you know, if you got a player that's in a body, but he's not good enough to play, um, it really doesn't help you that much anyway. You know, we won't forfeit any games. Uh, we'll we'll probably play the same amount of guys we normally play. We'll just practices will be a little different, but I'm not going to change them any, and it's not really that big a deal. So um, Jay Wright has told me that playing six was awesome for him. You know, we won't be doing that. We'll play more than that, but I think you can do that if if you need to. In this day and age where everybody's unhappy about their playing time, um, maybe it works to our advantage. Who knows? All right. Thanks.